Creating transactions or loops is quick and easy when utilizing all the features DotLoop has to offer. Start creating your first loop by simply clicking the circular button with the white plus symbol. A window will then appear asking you to name the loop. A good practice for loop naming dictates that you name the loop the property address if you are selling and you name the loop the name of your clients if you are buying. For this example, I will name it the property address my sellers are listing. Once we have titled our loop, the first step we want to take is adding all parties involved in the transaction. Do this by scrolling down to the People section of the loop and clicking Add Person on the right side of the page. Here, we will fill in the individual's name, email address, and make sure to assign a role by clicking Role. This step is crucial because what role you give them will auto-populate their information into the corresponding fields on the documents we will add later. Make sure you choose your role as well. Also, it is important to note if you are attached to your company's dashboard, you will see an admin in the People section of all of your loops as we can see here. With my sellers now added to this loop, I can begin filling out the View Details page of my loop. The View Details page is important because it is in here that my documents will retrieve all of their autofill information. We want to make sure to update the transaction type before filling out the optional fields listed below. Continue down the page filling out all the necessary fields. All fields are optional, but the more thorough you are now, the less manual typing you'll need to do on your documents in the future. Finally, click Save. There is a Save button at the bottom right and top right of the View Details page. Now that we have saved all of our information, let's head back to the Standard Loop page, the place where we see our documents, people, and tasks. So to recap so far, first we named our loop, then we added what people we could to the people section and gave them roles. Then we completed the view details page. The final step in loop creation is to add your documents. You add your documents last because all of the steps leading up to this have been providing DotLoop with information to autofill your documents. You'll have one folder in your loop by default. You can name this folder if you'd like by clicking the Folders menu button and choosing Rename. You'll see your blinking cursor in your Folders Name field. Adding documents to your folder is very easy. In the center of your Documents section, you will see a large Add From button. There should be a drop-down menu displayed underneath this. If there is not, simply click the Add From button. We give you three options for adding documents to your loop. Documents added from your computer are flat PDFs and will not autofill. You can add fields to documents added from your computer and edit them as much as you'd like. Just remember these documents will not autofill. The second option is to add from templates. Your templates are where all of your interactive and autofillable documents are located. If your profile is attached to your company's dashboard or attached to an association partnered with DotLoop, you will almost always find the convenient interactive documents in your templates. The third option, Add from Email, simply provides you with an email address to this loop where you can go into your email account and forward emails with PDF attachments into this loop. DotLoop will only pull the PDF attachment into the loop. For this example, I will be adding documents from my templates. When the template window appears, it will display your template folders on the left, and after selecting a folder, you will see the individual documents held within that folder displayed on the right. If you are looking for a particular document, you can click on the folder that the document is held in and then search for it using the template search bar here. Choose all the documents you want to add to your loop, then simply click the Add Documents button located at the bottom right-hand side of this window. 
Now in your folder, you will see all of the documents you have added to the loop. Click the title of the document to view and modify it. When you initially open the document added from your templates, a window will appear on the screen asking you to confirm the roles we already assigned to the people we have added to the loop. Make sure everything looks OK and then click Assign. You will now see that not only is all the information we filled out in the View Details in the People section autofilled throughout the document, but each party that is required to sign or initial in a particular spot has been assigned to that field. Once the document is ready, you can save and share it here. Or you can return to the loop to check multiple documents at once and then click the big share button on the right. If you want to complete an action for more than one document in your loop, click one of the options parallel to the share button here. If you wish to complete an action for a particular document or folder, click the corresponding down arrow. Once we click Share, the Share Document window will appear. In the top part of this window, you can view who has access currently, and in the bottom portion, you can select who you want to share it with. If individuals have fields assigned to them on the document that you've been working on, they will be checked already with how many fields they have assigned to them, as displayed here. In the same row to the right, you will also see the permission you are sharing with. Each of our clients have the can sign permission, meaning they have the ability to sign and initial the document once they receive it. For other documents that the clients or other parties will need to fill out, you will want to share with the Can Fill and Sign permission. When sharing documents with other agents, it is recommended to give them the Can Edit in Private permission. This allows the agent to assign fields to their client and obtain their signatures and initials. The fourth and final sharing permission is View Only, allowing the recipient to only view the document. If you would like to include a custom message, type it here. If you wish to attach a PDF copy of the documents, click Show Options and then check mark Attach PDF to Email. Once you're finished, just click Share. Sending an email to the recipient's inbox with a link allowing to view or interact with the document. To the right of each shared document, you will see the document's share status. If it is yet to be signed, you will see Waiting on Others, and once it has been completed, the share status will display Signed. This may also say Part Signed if your client has only partially signed the document. Bringing up the Share window again will show you if the client has yet to open the document by displaying Waiting. If they have opened it but have not yet signed it, you will see Viewed and once it has been completed, this status will display signed.